How many times have you been asked this particular question in an interview? Design a URL shortener or how do you design a URL shortener? Let's try creating a URL shortener and understand how simple it is as a concept. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primus. As usual, I am the start.spring.io. I am going to create a Spring Boot application with Spring Boot 2.1, which is the current version of Spring Boot. The group ID is com tech primers, and I am going to mention URL shortener. For example. And the dependencies which we would require are Spring MVC. I am not going to use Spring Web Flux. I am going to use Spring MVC. And I would like to use Spring Data Redis. So this is the library which I am going to use to connect to my Redis instance. I already have installed Redis in my machine and I have started it. By default it is running in the port 56379 and the version of Redis which I am using is 5.0.0. I am going to use Spring Data Redis in order to connect to this particular instance which is running in my machine. I will download the project and then open it in IntelliJ. The project is getting loaded. As usual, all my repositories are available in the GitHub repository. You can take a look at all the codes from there. The project is now loaded. Let me go and check what are the different files which I have here. So I have the default file, the URL shortener example, because that is the name of the application which I gave. So this is the starting point. Meanwhile, I'm going to create a REST endpoint using which we are going to create the short and shorter URLs and also retrieve the URLs based on the shorter text which we provide. So I am going to create this class called URL Shortener Resource. And I am going to use the Spring MVC framework. So I will just do all these ceremonies here. REST controller. I will make this particular REST endpoint as REST slash URL. I'm going to have a REST endpoint which will return my complete URL based on what I provide. I am going to call this as a, let's say short URL or ID basically. This is a unique identifier, right? So I'm going to call it as ID and this is a path variable. So I'm going to use that path variable. Let's come to this in a while. Also, I will have a post mapping where I'm going to create this particular short URL. So I'm not going to use anything here. I'll just use the same post and I'll just say create. I want this to be passed as a body. So I'll just say request body. So once I retrieve this URL in the post section, I need to validate whether the URL is good or not. I'm going to use the common library, the comms validator. I'll go to the POM here and add the dependency for the commons validator. And the version which I'm going to use is 1.6. That's the latest version of the comms library. So I'm just going to use that particular version. I'll do a Maven import. Now I can come back here. I'll use the URL validator. And I can do a URL validator dot is validate to check if the URL is valid or not. And based on that, I can perform some specific logic here. And I need to allow only the HTTP or HTTPS URL. So I'm going to use my custom schemes, which I'm going to provide. I'm going to say HTTP and HTTPS. This will allow only the URLs which are starting with HTTP and HTTPS. So it will not allow any FTP URLs because I don't want to short on those. So once the URL is valid, we need to generate some hash based on this particular URL. So in order to shorten this URL, I'm going to use the Guava library, which Google provides. So I'm going to use Guava and the latest version of Guava is 18.0. I'm going to use that particular version. 
so let's do the import so this is going to bring in a class called hashing i'm going to use the hashing class and i'm going to use something called murmur hash so murmur hash is a algorithm with which you can create a unique identifier from a particular text so basically these are useful for cryptography when you are when you want to encrypt your text into something else so i'm going to use the murmur hash 3 which google guava provides i'm going to use the class called hashing so there is a class called hashing and under the hashing you have something called murmur 32 this is what i'm going to use under that i'm going to say hash my string because it's a string which i'm going to pass so i'm going to provide the string and there is a char set which we need to provide so i'm going to say standard char sets dot utf8 i want to use the utf8 character sets so that i can convert this particular url into a specific unique identifier so this is just basically to identify a unique key which we can store inside our redis cache so in the redis cache we are going to use the key value store and we are going to store it so as you know redis is by default a key value store imagine redis as a hash map you can use a identifier and put some values in it and you can retrieve via the same identifier i'm going to create a unique identifier using this hashing so by default it will return a hash code and i'm going to convert that into a string i'm going to call this string as id which is the identifier which we need to have as the key and we have the value which is the url now how do we populate this into a redis cache i'm going to use the string redis template so this is the template which is provided by spring which can be used i'm going to use the auto wiring option so which can be used in order to put values into this particular redis cache i'm going to use the redis template here and i'll show you how to do it so there is something called operations for value because we are going to retrieve the data and we are going to operate only on the value right which is the url so i'm going to use the method called ops for value which is under the redis template because we are going to store only strings isn't it both the key and the values are all strings so we are using the string redis template and we are going to use the method called ops for value which is something but operations for value because we are going to retrieve the value from this particular key and i'll just say set my id as the key and my url as the value so this is how you are going to populate the redis cache this is similar to populating a hash map where we say hash map dot put of key comma value we are going to use here the redis cache and then say set my key and value to this particular value let's log this id for our reference so the id gets generated we'll just call it url id and we are going to set this particular id here and i want to return this back so that the user is able to see what id got generated so in the post i'm going to pass the url i'm validating this url and checking if it is valid once it is valid i'm creating a hash out of it and i'm storing that into the redis cache and i'm going to return that particular hash whatever got generated which is basically the id if the url is not valid what i'm going to do is i'm going to throw an exception I'm not going to do any other exception handling. I'm just going to throw this. So that should work for our create. Now, once the URL is created, we need to now pass the ID here to retrieve the long URL, right? So once a person has a, the short URL, he's going to retrieve that long URL from here. Maybe APIs do it, or maybe users can do it directly from this rest endpoint. I got the ID here. Now we need to retrieve this particular value from the string template, isn't it? So we'll just do the Redis template dot um, ops for value the same thing and instead of the set we are going to do the get like how we retrieve from a hash map so we are just doing that here and this will return the url and i'm going to return this url for simplicity let's log this as well that's it so while during a get we are returning the url while doing the post we are just pushing this url so this is just a happy path scenario we have not done any exception handling here 
let's try if this works and then we will add some exception handling here for example what if the url doesn't exist and i'm just trying to access it so those are not handled here i'm going to start this particular spring boot application meanwhile 8080 in my machine is occupied as you guys might have known by now i'll just use a different port i'll just use 8081 8080 is already occupied so i'm going to use 8081 and let's start the application i'm just going to start it in debug mode just in case if there is an issue we can just go and debug it so the url which i'm going to access is rest slash urls meanwhile let's go to the postman where I'm going to hit the post here. The URL which I'll be accessing is http colon double slash local double slash localhost colon 8081 slash rest slash URL. So that is the post URL and I'm going to pass the raw URL which I want to shorten. So let's try shortening this particular Wikipedia URL. Right? So let's see if the application is up. The application is up. Yep. It's almost up. Where is it? Yeah. It's up with the port number 8081. Now let's try hitting the post. So this should now create a unique hash for us. And this should get stored inside the Redis cache. So let's go to the Redis cache and see that the Redis cache has done something right now. So right now the time is 829. And at 829, it has saved something into its database. So that is what we wanted. So it has now created a hash, stored it inside the Redis cache. So you can see some logs as well. And we have added a log called UID generated. And this is the UID which got generated. And we can see that in Postman as well. So this is the unique identifier which got generated. Now I'm going to do a get to see if this works while retrieving. Res slash URL. And I'm going to pass this as a path parameter. I'll just pass it this way. So the port number is 8081. So yep, we are able to retrieve the URL back and we can check the log which got generated. Yeah, URL retrieved and then the URL which is retrieved from the Redis cache is now printed. Now if you see, there is no check on whether the URL is null. If the URL is null, what should I do? Isn't it? If the URL is null, I'm going to... throw an exception again so that is what right so there is no shorter url for this particular id which you provided so i'm just going to throw it and another thing is what if we are trying to create a new url again and again so this is going to return every time the same value however just to make sure we don't hamper the performance of the redis cache what we can do is we can do a get and then do a set However, since my hashing is going to always generate the same unique value for this particular URL, I'm not going to handle that particular scenario here. If at all you're not you're worried about handling it, you can do it. If let's say you are having a cache inside the JVM itself. Here we are using the Redis template and directly connecting to the Redis and retrieving it every time. However, let's say you want to have a cache internally inside the JVM, then you can check by doing a get, check if it is not null and then do one and then say that there, it's already existing and if it is null then go and create it so that is what you can do in this particular part but i'm not going to handle that let's uh, make it simple for now and let's start this particular server again to check if this this particular check works whatever we had it here so the server is up let's go and click the get again this should return yeah successfully yes let's try retrieving a invalid value so this is an invalid value which i gave and notice that the return type is a finite internal error because it is throwing an exception and it shows there is no url for whatever id which i passed so this is the error message which spring is by default returning so you can change this type of message by using a rest controller advice maybe if you want to know how to change this response do let me know i can make a video on that but there are blogs out there you can take a look at that anytime but this is how you can create a small url shortener as usual i'll just upload this into my github repository you can take a look at from there so i've used the guava library 
to create the hash string and I am just using the commons validator in order to validate the URL. I hope you learned something new from this particular video. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.